The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Adventure, Charity takes it on the chin. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Reed, as publisher of a newspaper, you're in a position to know a lot about people, aren't you? Well, it depends on the type of person you have in mind. You know, people in the public eye. Well, frankly, Bennett, I haven't been around the Sentinel much lately. You haven't? I've been letting it run itself, so to speak. I see. Well, in that case... But perhaps I may have some information, Bennett. Who's the man? As you know, the Welfare Board is trying to get an extra million for... Considering it right now, one of my best reporters is at the meeting. Do you know that I'm connected with the Welfare Board? You, Bennett? For the past month, I've been serving as treasurer for the special charity fund. Well, the charity relief is handled separately from the regular welfare money? Yes, that's it. I took this position without pay simply to help out. Well, doesn't your regular business keep you pretty tied down? It would, only my work as treasurer on the charity fund is practically routine. Well, how do you mean? I have nothing to do with the actual disbursement of the money. Oh, naturally. The setup requires two signatures on each relief check, mine and Tinker's. Tinker? Oh, he's head of the welfare board, isn't he? Yes. As I was saying, we each sign the checks. But in order to facilitate matters, I've been putting my signature on blank checks. In that way, Tinker doesn't have to wait for me at any time. Oh, isn't that rather unusual? No, it's done pretty often. But that means you've no idea whether those checks are for the right amounts or whether they're made out to the right people. That's precisely what's bothering me. I have no reason to believe that Tinker is doing anything dishonest, mind you. You wouldn't be speaking this way if you didn't have some suspicions, Bennett. That's all they are, Reed. Suspicions. Tinker has a friend named Murdoch. He's always around the welfare board. I don't like him, and I don't like the way he and Tinker are always together. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps you're imagining things. Well, I hope I am. After this, Bennett, if I were you, I'd be careful about signing blank checks. I intend speaking to Tinker about that very soon. Just now, of course, he's busy trying to get this extra million for local charity out of the city council. Well, I'll call my office and see if that appropriation's been passed. Fine. Charity is a fine thing, Bennett, but all that money can be a great temptation for the wrong people. And with an extra million coming... Oh, let me have Miss Case, please. Miss Case? Mr. Reed, has Lowry brought back any news from the city council meeting? Well, they have, huh? It's already in the papers. Oh, thanks, Miss Case. I'll be in very soon. Well? The city council okayed the extra million for charity, Bennett. Remember what I told you about those checks. <laughs> Appropriation. That's no yes, what is it? There's a young man out here applying for charity, Mr. Tinker. Did he fill out the usual form? Yes, sir. I told him he, there was a long list, but he said he needs help immediately. He's very insistent. Oh. All right, send him in. I'll settle it. <laughs> Another one, Tinker? The sixth one today. 
Uh, Murdoch, perhaps you'd better go into that other office. Sure, sure, Tinker. After all, this ain't supposed to be any of my business. If anyone gets an idea that Murdoch and I are taking a cut of that charity money, it might mean... Uh, my name's Drake, Mr. Tinker. Girls... Close the door. Come in. Uh, look, Mr. Tinker, it ain't for me. It's my wife. She ain't feeling so well. Drake, it takes time to care for people. Cases like yours must go through a regular routine. Can't hand out charity to everyone who comes asking for it. Your case will be investigated, same as the rest. Yes. But can I get something special for my wife? The doc says she needs medicine right away. Your name is on the list and we'll investigate. If you deserve charity, you'll get it as soon as possible. Yeah, but... The welfare board is already pressed to the limit. You'll have to be patient. Yes, sir. Only I figured with that extra million... That extra million is practically drained away already. Well, can't you make... I'm very busy. If you're deserving, you may be tended to. That's uh, all. Yes, sir. It's only on account of the wife. I'll give them the money. <laughs> I can use it myself. He's gone, Murdoch. Happy work, Tinker. <laughs> you don't waste time. Can't afford to. We have to figure out how to get our hands on a share of that million dollars. You told that sap the million was already earmarked for the other charity cases? Of course. Now, what's our plan? Same as before. We put 500 phony names on the charity list. You have the list? Yeah, sure, I got it. Right here. Hmm. Abby, Abbott, Adler, Augustini. Where'd you get these letters? <laughs> Relax, will you? They're okay. Can't have anyone checking up on them. Not a chance. Well, these phony names, we'll be able to grab off 100,000 for ourselves. Perhaps 200,000. That's the stuff. And nobody the wiser. Of course, there's Bennett to consider. Bennett? And what about Bennett? He wants me to have the checks filled out before he signs them. That'd ruin us. Don't worry, Murdoch. <laughs> I told Bennett we'd do as he wanted. Are you crazy? As soon as I got around to it. I told him it meant changing the routine, and it might take a little time. Oh, you stalled him. For a long time. <laughs> That's the angle, Tinker. Plenty of graft for you and me. Well, you know that old saying, Murdoch. Yeah? Charity begins at home. <laughs> That's it. Charity begins at home. That's rich. <laughs> Charity. <laughs> Casey, there's one thing me and Clicker want to know. If you want to borrow money, I'm busy. What are we working for? Are we newspaper men or charity investigators? Well, if I ask me, the only people I know are newspaper men. And you're not in that class. Will you stop pounding that typewriter? Uh, don't tell me you two are sore because Mr. Reed sent you out on a door-to-door -door job. Sore? You ought to see my feet. They don't pave the sidewalks with mattresses in this town. After walking 20 miles, I know. Why is Mr. Reed so anxious for us to talk to people who are on charity rolls? He thinks there's something going on. Yes? Lowry and Miss Binney are here, Mr. Reed. Oh, send them right in. All right, you two. You can ask Mr. Reed all those questions instead of bothering me with them. Hello, Miss Binney. Lowry. Oh. You got any interviews? Mr. Reed, we must have talked to about 200. Yeah, we posed as investigators for the welfare board. If we'd had a list, we wouldn't have wasted so much time going from one door to the next. Tinker refused to release his list. Why? Well, Lowry's reason sounds all right. He claims revealing names would embarrass those receiving charity. Well, plenty are getting it, Mr. Reed. We found lots and no complaints. Yeah, as far as appearances are concerned, Tinker's on the level. Yes, for a city the size of ours, more money is being spent than conditions warrant. Our charity expenses are way out of line with what they ought to be. Boss, if Tinker won't release that list, you can't prove anything like that. Lowry, how'd you like to apply for charity? Charity? Me? I'm serious, Lowry. Now, Tinker won't see reporters at all. The only way to find the facts is from the inside. Say, I get it, boss. I'll wear old clothes. That's and... what you're wearing now. And everything you can. If you get a chance, talk to Bennett or tell him you're from the Sentinel. Right. There's a racket going on in charity. It's the filthiest there is. The Daily Sentinel wants to know about it all the way to rock bottom. <laughs> Look, lady, I've been coming here to the welfare board every day for a week. I'm sorry, we're doing all we can. Here I am again. The name's Lau... Uh, I mean, Lauren. Sorry, no news yet. Boss, I tell you, I'm getting no place. Stick with it, Lowry. You talked to Bennett yet? I'll keep trying, but these hard benches are sure wearing my pants awful thin. <laughs> Uh, you're uh, Mr. Bennett, aren't you? 
I'd like to talk to you. My name's Lowry of the Sentinel. The Sentinel? Rick Reed's paper. Why, I was going to call him. Is that so, Mr. Bennett? Uh, come over here in the corner. We can talk with less interference. Yes, yes. Just what is it you're after? The boss, uh, Mr. Reed, has his doubts about the way Tinker's running things here. He sent me over to see if I could wangle anything from the inside. Did he tell you that I'm treasurer here? Yes. Have you seen the list of charity people, Mr. Bennett? Not yet, though I've asked for it. At your employer's suggestion, I've uh, also told Tinker I must refuse to sign checks in blank any longer. Wow, you've been doing that? Unfortunately, yes. Then you don't know a thing about who gets these checks? Or how much is going out, exactly. What did Tinker say when you told him you wouldn't do it anymore? He said he'd see the checks were filled out first. But so far, they haven't been. Says he's been too busy. Can't pin him down, huh? I, uh... Oh, hold on. Here he comes now. Hello, Tinker. Oh, Bennett. I've been looking for you. Got another batch of checks. Are they filled out? Well, not this batch. I promise you the next one. Oh, when these are filled out, I'll sign. Uh, not before. Bennett, it sounds very much as if you don't trust me. You can't keep charity cases waiting because of a mere formality. Then I suggest you get these filled out at once. Well, if you insist... I do. It may take a little time. Shall we say, uh, tomorrow morning? I'll be waiting. I was right there when Bennett talked to Tinker, boss. I'm going to see him this noon and get the lowdown. He's seeing Tinker this morning, eh? About the checks? Yes, and if Tinker stalls any more, we'll know there's something funny. Hey, Lowry, I thought you were going to see Bennett this noon. Oh, well, he is, Miss Benny. Well, try and find him. Tinker, what's biting you? Plenty. Look at this teletype from police headquarters, Mr. Reed. General alarm to all police. Be on lookout for Treasurer Bennett of the Welfare Department. Disapp Bennett disappeared. He hasn't been seen since last night. And you know what? All the files and records of the welfare board have disappeared with him. So the police think Bennett's responsible. For plenty. The police believe he swiped the charity money. What? Where did they get that idea? From Tinker. He says the money is gone. When Bennett didn't show up this morning, Tinker says he got suspicious and checked up. So the police learned of Bennett's disappearance from Tinker. What about Mrs. Bennett? She insists Bennett has gone away on a trip. Where? That's just it. She won't say. Yes? Johnny can Brit. I'm doing a remake on the front page. What do you think of that guy, Bennett, absconding with that charity doll? You got a headline? Have it in a second. Lowry. Yeah, boss? Go over to Bennett's home. Grab a statement from his wife. Go with him, Miss Benny, for pictures. Come on, Lockenbach. Here's the headline, Brett. Sure. Sell it across page one. Bennett absconds with charity cash. Kill it. It's too strong. What? You heard me. The son was going to convict Bennett before he's had a chance. Blast it, Reed. What further proof do you want? Why, any blind fool can see Bennett swipe the doll. We're not blind fools, Gunnigan. Those are orders. Oh, if your father was still running this newspaper, I'll do it, but I don't like it. You don't have to. Even Gunnigan believes Bennett is guilty. Well, maybe he is, but his disappearance is too pat. Especially after what Laura heard him say to Tinker. And there's only one solution. Bennett must be found. Short time later, in his apartment, Brett Reed took Cato, his faithful valet and the only living man to know him as the Green Hornet, into his company. So you see, Cato, Tinker is here apparently innocent while Bennett is gone. Maybe Tinker's innocent, Miss Brett. I'm betting Tinker's the guilty one, Cato, not Bennett. If Tinker and this pal of his, Murdoch, have been milking the charity funds, Bennett's demand to have the checks filled out would have revealed it. How can you know for sure? It's odd that Mrs. Bennett, while she insists her husband is innocent, has merely gone away on a trip. Refuses to reveal where he's gone. Perhaps she's hiding something. I don't know, Cato. I don't know. Uh, her house will be crowded with reporters tonight. It may be hard to get in unseen. Still, we can try. See her tonight? Mrs. Bennett and her son may be keeping quiet out of fear. Perhaps the sudden appearance of the Green Hornet may make her reveal any secret knowledge she may have. Mr. Brett. Yes? What's happened to those poor ones in the meantime? The people who've been depending on charity? That's just it, Cato. A lot of them are going to suffer added hardship if that charity fund isn't located. That's true. And however much I regret it, Cato, it must be done. I must go out as the Green Hornet. A mask, Cato. A weapon. Have the car checked immediately. Mrs. Bennett is going to hear from the Green Hornet. <laughs> The curtain falls on Act One of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Bennett, treasurer of the welfare board, disappeared with all the files and records. 
The police believed that Bennett had absconded with the charity funds. But Brett Reed, unconvinced of Bennett's guilt, assumed the role of the Green Hornet to uncover those who were really guilty. It's late in the evening. Mrs. Bennett is being questioned by reporters. How about it, Mrs. Bennett? You keep saying you know where he is. He isn't guilty. Why don't you tell us? He is innocent. He is. How about the charity dough? Yes, how about that money? <laughs> While they crowded around Mrs. Bennett and her 20-year-old son in the Bennett Library, a tall figure slipped through a side window into the hall. All the reporters left their hats here on the table. In the fine lorries. Yeah, here it is. Initials E.L. But Reed took an envelope from his pocket and slipped it under Lowry's hat. Then he left to await developments. He left the letter under Lowry's hat, Cato. Be sure to find it when he's ready to go. It's addressed to Mrs. Bennett. Yes, sir. I'm going back inside. I want to be there when she's had a chance to read it. Very dangerous, Mr. Bennett. The reporters... I'll stay well out of sight, Cato. The reporters are still in the library. I'll have time to find a good hiding place before they go out into the hall. What, Laurie? Get behind these drapes. Huh? Come on. I want to ask Mrs. Bennett a couple of questions when this mob leaves. Maybe she'll talk them. My mother has nothing more to say. You'll have to leave. Looks yeah. like you'll have a chance soon. They're all going out into the hall. Okay, Mrs. Bennett, if you won't talk, why, your headache, not ours. You know your own mind. Your hats are on the table. Will you take them and go? We have nothing more to say. You know what the police are saying, Mrs. Bennett? I know what everyone is saying. But here's the front door. Outside. Listen, Mrs. Bennett. Outside. Oh, Jim. Jim. Take it easy, Mother. If there were only some way out of this. Can't blame those reporters. After all, they were only doing their jobs. To think that your father should be left open to talk like this and we're helpless. Mrs. Bennett, now that that mom's left, how about well, telling I me... I told you... you reporters to get out. Well, we sort of stayed behind in the library. We're not staying any longer. Get out with the others. Now, wait a minute. Mrs. Bennett, I had a reason for hanging around. I think your husband's innocent. I know he is. I saw him yesterday at the welfare board. You did? Sure. We had a long talk. Don't listen to her, Mother. It's a trick to get you off your guard. On the level. He's right. Look, Mrs. Bennett, hasn't the Sentinel given your husband every possible break? We're the only newspaper that hasn't gone after Mr. Bennett, Hammer and Tongs. Yes, I did notice that, but Can't I... you see my mother's very tired? Oh, Mrs. Bennett, the Sentinel wants to help you, honest. But if you keep on being secretive about things... I what... can't tell you anything more. Okay. I'll grab my hat and scram. Hey, what's that? Hmm? Why, it's a letter. Addressed to you, Mother. It must have been under my hat. But it has no stamp. I'm certain it wasn't there before. What? What's it about? <gasps> oh, Mother. What's wrong? Hey, Lowry, look at the top of that letter. Wow. The seal of the Green Hornet. I don't understand. Why should the Green Hornet write to me? Now, let me see that letter. Now, wait a minute. Don't be so suspicious. We're not going to burn it. Well, I'll be. Mrs. Bennett, according to this letter, you've already paid 25,000 ransom to the Green Hornet. But that, that's not so. And what about this? It says, pay to me and my partner. Don't tell me the Hornet's working with someone else. It's not true. I haven't paid any money. It's some crank. No, ma'am. I've seen plenty of Green Hornet notes. This is no fake. But it can't be. Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Let me take this note. You can't publish that. Use your head. This will help your father. Sure. If the Green Hornet's got him, then maybe the cops won't be so positive he skipped out himself. I don't care what you do. Only please, please get out. Okay. Come on, Clicker. Don't worry, Mrs. Bennett. It can't harm your husband. And boy, what a story. <laughs> Leaving his mask and gun in the car, Britt Reed, once more the presentable publisher of the Sentinel, walked into a drugstore and entered the phone booth. Yeah, I think he should be at his home. If he doesn't answer there, I'll try his office. Got to arrange for him to call on Murdoch. Hello? Your pound Murdoch is pulling a double cross. There'll be an extra out about it in a few minutes. What are you talking about? Who is this? Take a look at that extra. All right, Cato, now you get to a phone. Call Murdoch and keep his line busy. After that extra comes out, I don't want Ticker to be able to get Murdoch on the phone. Stay on the phone till you hear me in Murdoch's home, man. Join me there. It's right around the corner and I get going. Ransom wrote to Bennett family. Hey. But I tell you, you got the wrong number. This is the fifth time you've called. 
Well, look it up, then. Hang up, Murdoch. Huh? Who the devil is? I said hang up. What's this, a stick-up? Take a good look, Murdoch. Yeah, I'll move into the light. Why? I've seen pictures of that mask. You're... You're the Green Hornet. Seen the paper, Murdoch? Then have you plugged me with that gun? I'm keeping my eyes. Read it. I... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Green Hornet sends... How do you like it? Collected 25,000 from... Who's your partner? It says here... Partner? How do you think? Think it wouldn't be fool enough? No. But the sap pulling a bonehead play like this. Maybe he figures 25,000 extra is worth going after. Say, Tinker didn't tell me nothing about you, Hornet. Why should we tip you off? I... What are you doing here? See what that ransom note says about Bennett? You mean about him going to be released? Do you think he will be? He can't be released. That ain't the plan. Maybe Tinker figures the same thing applies to you. You... You're in with Tinker. Why else would I be here? Huh? Why should Tinker cut you in on that charity graft? Well, you out of the way like Bennett, he can grab it all for himself. What? No, no, listen, Hornet. Let me call Tinker. He's not at home. But then where, where else would he be? If he ain't home, he must be out at the farm with Bennett. I'll, I'll fix it up. He, he can't cut me out. Go ahead, phone. You're not calling anybody. Listen, listen, Hornet. I, I'll, I'll stay out of it. I, I, I don't want nothing. You yellow crawling crook. He, he, he sent you over to get rid of me. But you don't have to. I don't want none of the dough. Put, put the rod down. You're shaking, Murder. No, don't hit it. Stop it. <coughs> you done it. Yes. <coughs> Castle hold him for a few minutes. When he comes to, we'll go after Tinker. I made sure he believes Tinker's at the place where Bennett is held prisoner. And I'll take care of Tinker. If he's been unable to get Murdoch on the phone, he'll be here any second. Cato, you've been watching the door? Yes, sir. So don't come in now. Good. Stand beside the door, Cato. Give him a chance to see me before you do the job. I understand. You ready, Cato? Already. We've been trying to get you on the phone, Murdoch. Have you seen the sentinel? Yes, he saw it. Well, you're not Murdoch. The Green Hornet. And it's true, Murdoch is double cross now. Yes, my throat. What? Grab his arm. He's going with us. What do we do? Murdoch will recover soon. He'll head for the farmhouse then. We follow and get Tinker there with him. Oh, in my throat. Where, where am I? In my home, I... The Green Hornet came here to finish me, but I'm still alive. Ah. So Tinker wanted to get me out of the way, too. But I'll fix him. Go out to the farm. Take care of him. He won't expect to see me. Take a gun. Try to double-cross me, huh? Kato. And we figured Murdoch led us right here to the farmhouse where Bennett is kept. Yeah, there's Murdoch's car up ahead. Yes, sir. Well, take Tinker out now and put him in the back room of the farmhouse where Murdoch will find him. You call the police so they'll be here soon. Yes, sir. And I'll stay around to make sure Murdoch doesn't start using that gun before they get here. Once the police find Bennett, they'll get the whole story. I've got to go slow. Can that Tinker trap me? Not after I got out of his first scheme to bump me off. He won't get a second chance. Put on the light. Who is it? Help me. No, it's just you, Bennett. Where's Tinker? I've seen nobody. How long are you going to keep me tied up here, Murdoch? You can't... Don't lie to me, Bennett. Where's Tinker? Where's the Green Hornet? I don't know what you're talking about. Talk to me that way, will you? Well, I'm staying right here until Tinker shows up. He figures he's finished me. Now he'll come for you. I'll put out the light and wait for him. While Murdoch waited, Tinker, in another room, recovered consciousness. Uh, I'm in the farmhouse. Realizing where he was, he moved stealthily through the old house until he reached the room where Bennett was tied. He opened the door. Is anyone in here? I've been expecting you, Tinker. Murdoch! Yeah! You and your pal thought you could double-cross me and grab all the dough, didn't you? What? You sent the Green Hornet around of my place to put me on a spot, huh? But it didn't work. What are you talking about? The Green Hornet was working for you. Is that the best talking you can think of? Don't try to pull a wool over my eyes, Murdoch. If I ever get to the police... Shut up, you! I know when I'm being double-crossed, Tinker. Now, see here. Ah, oh, you listen to me. 
Figure by this time I'd be finished, huh? You ain't satisfied with our neat little scheme to grab off a couple hundred grand from the welfare board and pin the rap on Bennett. You were the one who wasn't satisfied. You calling the horn and not me. <laughs> Talking will do you no good. Put down that gun. Frame me, will you? No such thing. I didn't think... This gun doesn't have gas, Tinker. When I take care of you and Bennett, I'll find that green hornet and... Drop it, my dog! The police! Let's get out of here! I'll take it! Thank the Lord you got here. Don't move, Tinker! Search him! Why, you... Try to get past me, will you? Good work, Doyle. Mr. Bennett, are you all right? Yes, I. if you'll untie me. I demand that you arrest Murdoch. He's tried to shoot me. Uh, I'm sure we'll arrest him. And you too. It was Tinker's idea of kidnapping Bennett. You, you can't pin that on me. There's plenty on both of you as soon as Bennett starts talking. Take these guys out. Get moving. A little cell waiting for you, babies. Put the cuffs on them. Officer, these two men have been milking the charity fund. They kidnapped me, so I would be blamed. We'll have you out of these ropes the jiffy, Mr. Bennett. When you make your official statement, we'll have them cold. Hey, Clicker, how about some pictures? I got plenty, Lowry. How are we going to get them into the newspaper? I can't phone the story, but you can't phone pictures. Do I'll be a sport and lend us one of your cars? Nothing doing. Them's police cars. Oh. Hey, Lowry, get your hands out of my pocket. What Thanks are you doing? Car keys, Doyle. I'll give them to you tomorrow. Attaboy, Lowry. Come on, Clicker. Lowry, Clicker, come back to them keys. Come on, Doyle. See you in the papers. Lowry, the way you took those keys out of Doyle's pocket, I could kiss you. <laughs> Save it for my birthday, Clicker. Come on. Let's get the story in with pictures. <laughs> is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated.